How's it going everyone? Welcome to the first Incursion Red River development vlog. In this video, I want to go over all the update changes, additions, and fixes that the team has implemented up to now. We know it's been a few weeks since our last big update, and a lot has been added, changed, and fixed since the introduction of our new map, Bunker. So let's start with this new map. The Bunker map is a heavily CQB focused map with long tunnel corridors, dark spaces, and valuable loot areas scattered throughout the map. The most intense gunfight gameplay will happen here quite often, and having a way to navigate effectively will be quite needed, such as a weapon light or even night vision. We also wanted to start implementing some more story elements, but that is still far from complete. But currently, the background of the bunker is that it was once a mining outpost turned into a military stronghold. It is currently being held by the Vietnamese Liberation Front, or VLF for short. With a brand new map introduced, we have also completely reworked the quarry map introducing new lanes of movement, new foliage, and a new screen space fog scattering system. The idea was to bring more immersion to the jungle side of the game, and we of course are still looking at eventually adding a dynamic weather system that will eventually bring rain and storms, but that is still far from an actual date, as implementing it right is also a top priority, as well as adding immersion into the game. We also added red flares to help you indicate and locate extraction points in both maps. So hopefully this will help in navigating certain areas of the bunker, as well as quarry, especially at night. We've also added four new weapons to Incursion Red River. In terms of diversifying our roster, the update will bring the PP-19 Vitiaz as another short-range weapon to the game, followed by the AKS-74U, both great weapons for a good budget, as well as two other weapons, the FN-FAL, which is extremely versatile, and the fan favorite, the SKS, which can be a great budget option for long-range encounters. We've also overhauled the AI to behave more consistent and challenging in addition to new AI types, guards, and snipers. AI types differ in their behavior and in their loadout. Additionally, we have added a more advanced AI perception system to further improve the AI behavior, which again, makes the AI gain sight on the player over time. Once the sight value reaches a certain threshold, which by the way, all of this can be adjusted in the AI difficulty settings, the AI will actually behave like it sees the player, preventing instances where the AI could instantaneously detect the player. So hopefully no more aimbotting. We've also improved the foliage visibility system, giving the player now a better chance to hide in the new dense jungle foliage. While this update already improved the AI quite a bit, AI is still very much a work in progress, and we will certainly continue to work hard on new features and adjustments moving forward. Another heavily anticipated change, voice lines. Brand new in fact. Even though our previous voice lines already caught some tractions as memes within the community, we decided to step up our voice lines to the next level with the help of an outsourcing company to completely get new voice lines into the game. You know, I never thought I'd miss a decent cup of coffee this much. Tell me about it. I'd kill for a real brew right now. Multiple tangos closing in, hold them off! We've got hostiles in our flank! Shift fire, shift fire! We want to give a huge thanks to Vox Grinder. You guys did a great job in writing, recording, and even acting and directing for the new voice lines. With this update, we also wanted to introduce our first iteration of a medical system. This means characters will get wounded when being shot, but the bullet defines the chance, and you need to use a bandage to stop losing continuous health. We've also reworked how painkillers work. While they previously just healed, they now only give a health buff for a certain amount of time. Or now, if you actually want to heal, you now need to use a health injector. With this update, we are also bringing animations to all of our medical items which really helps with the pace of the game as well. We're dedicated to increasing immersion without sacrificing playability across the board as development continues. And these animations are just the beginning for the new medical system. Also, as shown in one of our X posts already, we've also added interaction animations for unlocking, opening, and closing doors, as well as looting items, containers, and even jackets now. Again, this goes along with our goal for an even more interactive and grounded experience within our game. Another highly requested feature was increased depth to the armor system. We are now introducing a more complex penetration system where each armor comes with an additional protection level stat. 
and each bullet with its own specific stats such as piercing levels and separation penetration value can affect the amount of rounds you put on target. Based on armor durability, armor protection level, and of course the bullet piercing level, we calculate if the bullet did penetrate, well then how much blunt damage and how much armor damage is dealt. Basically, the higher the penetration level, the easier it will be to go through armor. We've also added different types of ammo types to help with this, such as armor piercing and hollow points. Again, each with their own pros and cons. We also wanted to address one of our main criticisms, and that was the subpar third person animations and third person models. We have hopefully tackled both issues at once with this update, as there is now a new crouch, sprint, and walk animation, as well as an updated model texture for each character. Of course, this is always in development, as well as eventually adding customization to each character. But again, that is for another update and another time. We've also added a new operation called Elimination. This will now spawn a boss with high tier armor and loot that needs to be eliminated by the player. The design of bosses are temporary at the moment, but will soon feature a full high quality character model with custom gear and lore details. Here you can see some concept art of one of our VLF bosses coming later down the line. This mission now only becomes available only on higher faction reputation. Secondly, we have also added a new task called Profit, where the player has to extract with over a threshold of loot value to complete the task. We've also reworked on how faction reputation works. Previously, you did lose a considerable amount of reputation for the rivaling factions when completing an operation for another one. That is no longer the case. You only lose reputation if you fail the operation. Tasks on the other hand provide only rewards such as cash and other items and no longer provide any faction reputation progress. Along with all the new content and features, we've also made significant changes to our economy. We've added many new barter items, making the looting experience much more diverse and exciting. Additionally, we've also increased barter item prices and added high value loot, for which you should keep your eyes open to, to make looting more meaningful. Together with the new barter items, we've also placed more looting spots together with the new safes, which are also placed across both maps and will need a key to be unlocked. While these safes are additional high value looting spots, they are placed within well guarded areas. We've also made some quality of life improvements to the inventory layout and usability. To reduce the need of scrolling, we've made all equipable slots such as weapons and gear available all the time to the player to quickly change equipped items. We've also added usability improvements such as switching between the laptop and the stash by quickly pressing tab which should make building your loadout much faster while we implement the weapons workbench. Additionally, we've also made general improvements to the game. For example, we improved the performance by utilizing new technologies of Unreal Engine 5 by further pushing the use of nanite geometry for high-end visuals and greater performance. Additionally, many optimizations have been applied to Lumen and Virtual Shadow maps to hopefully allow lower-end systems to get a similar experience in both visuals and performance. We've also improved the scalability of our game, allowing lower-end PCs to still get reasonable frames, while also reworking underlying systems like the inventory and mission system which does result in smaller save game files and more robust behavior which will allow us to work more efficiently in the future when we plan to expand on those systems. We've also improved the network bandwidth usage so now the co-op experience should feel a lot smoother than before. With the year of 2024 approaching its end, our focus remains on finishing on our original roadmap. However, we will also return to you with a brand new roadmap for 2025. To be completely transparent with you guys, we also plan to keep the six month release cycle as originally announced as it suits our team size and scope best and ensures each update comes with meaningful content and improvements. We will keep you guys updated every month with our development update as well. So we hope to catch you guys later.